if there be some wicked way in me, cleanse me from every sin and set me free. Are we ready to go? Search me, O oh God, and know my heart today. Try. Consecrate ourselves before the Lord. But the theme of the service today is I want to reach souls for Christ. That's our theme. We want to be vigilant in seeking that does not belong to Christ. And what better place to start than the family? So let us pray that the unsaved in our families will be saved. Let us pray that the unsaved spouses, the unsaved children, the unsaved aunt and uncles, the unsaved cousins, the unsaved neighbors will be saved. Let us pray, let us pray, let us pray. Oh, God, you're a 
told your disciples to tarry in Jerusalem until you bless them and they stayed together oh god and the scripture said they came together on one accord and when they were in one accord you pour out your spirit upon them and you change their lives help us to come together oh god so that we will be strengthened oh god our mandate this morning is to reach souls for the kingdom of God based on the commands that you gave to us. You said we should go into all the world and preach the gospel, the gospel of salvation. And Lord, what better place to start than in our families this morning. We have unsaved children, unsaved sons and unsaved daughters, unsaved grandchildren, unsaved sisters and brothers you know everything about them unsaved neighbors help us oh god to be vigilant in telling them of the gospel of our lord jesus christ that you came and you died on calvary you rose again and you are now sitting in heaven but why you came oh god is to remit us of our sins the scriptures say as in adam all died in Christ, all shall be made alive. But God, we have to accept you said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. So, oh God, help us to be instrumental. Oh God, in taking the gospel to those in our families. Oh God, help us to build back the family altar. Oh God, where we call our children in prayer and reading the words <clears throat> and allowing them to know that Christianity is still the lifestyle that you have created for us. You want us to serve you with all our hearts. Help us to possess the Joshua spirit. Oh God, Joshua said, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. He took control of his house. Help us to take control of our families. Help us to consecrate ourselves daily, oh God. Set apart ourselves for use. Oh God, we want to be meat for the master's use. We want to be vessels of honor this morning. So we come to you. We give our hearts to you. We cry to you from the recesses of our soul. And we said, search us, O God, and know our hearts today. Try us, O Savior, and know our thoughts, we pray, and all the wicked ways that are within us. We pray that you will cleanse us and set us free. O God, we pray that thou will give us the mind of Christ. O God, let the beauty of Jesus be seen in us at work, at home, at play, in all our ways, oh God. Help us to acknowledge you, Jesus, so that you will direct our path. You are our leader. You are our director. You are our refuge and our strength. So we come to you this morning. Naked, we come to you for dress. Helpless, we look to you for grace this morning. Bless us this morning. Bless us in abundance, Lord, we pray. Bless us with might in the inner man. Oh, God, that we will come to know the fullness of God. Lord, we are depending upon you. We need might to spread the gospel. We need might to dispel fear. Sometimes we are fearful and we, we don't want to trouble anybody. But, oh God, if we trouble them with the gospel, it's good trouble. So I pray that you will bless us, strengthen us in the inner being with the might through the power of the Holy Ghost. So that we will be able to tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ was born. Breathe upon us this morning, Lord, we pray. Breathe upon us, Lord, this morning. Breathe.
breathe upon us, Jesus Christ. Breathe upon us because your breath gives life. Oh God, you made man. And you breathe into us the, the breath. And we become a living soul. And without your breath, we are dead this morning. So help us to wake up. Breathe upon us, Lord, we pray. As we look to you and we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen and amen and amen. We come together to worship. We come together to adore. Clap your hands and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of all lords and the conquering lion of the tribe of Judah. It doesn't matter what you come with this morning. This is where chains, hallelujah, are broken. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May be seated. This morning, we just come to worship. And as I tell you, the theme is, I want to reach souls for Christ. Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the gospel. That's our mandate. So that is the theme this morning. We are just carrying out the mandate given to us. In our service this morning, we have our praise team who is going to come to us shortly, led by Sister Patrine. There's Brother Neil. There's Sister Opal. There's Sister... All right. Shall I get myself into trouble now? It's not that I don't know, you know, but the brain gone. Okay, so they will be coming to us shortly. And then we will have, after the praise team, we are going to have welcome and notices by Sister Ingrid. And after that, we are going to have baby dedication by no other than our beloved Reverend Dr. Donald A. Roberts. And following his coming, praise team is going to come back to us again. And we will have the tithes and offering. You will not see me again until after this segment. Let us worship the King of Kings. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, glory to God in the highest. We worship you this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good to me, how can I let him down? Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. God is good to me, how can I let him down? How can I let him down? How can I let him down? Let him down? He's so good to me. God is good. God is good.
Hallelujah, God is good. We worship the Lord. Yeah, man. Hallelujah. Devil right off my car. But God is good. I am standing here today because God is good. God is good to me. And God is good to you. So we worship him. And we praise him. There is no one holy like the Lord. There is none beside you. There is no rock like our God. 1 Samuel 2, verse 2. Nobody like you, Lord. Hallelujah.
your name.
a minute to glorify the Lord. For he is worthy. He is worthy to be praised. Worthy to be lifted up. Worthy to be magnified. Who is like unto the Lord? No one is like the Lord. No one gives him counsel. Oh, we bless your name, Lord. Hallelujah. 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 What a good God we serve. Hallelujah. This morning, my brothers and sisters, it's just so good to see you all. Just look around at your brothers and sisters. Just look around you this morning. Some persons you haven't seen for a while, not true? Yes. And so I'm going to ask, you have one minute. Let me see if you know time. That's 60 seconds to stand up and find somebody who you haven't seen for a while. And if you haven't seen somebody for a while, go find their name. And I will know if you did. Sister Brown, you're looking nice. After all, yes. Yeah. Stand up, Sister Brown, and let them see how you look nice. Show them how beautiful you look. Sister Brown, stand up, let them see how beautiful you look. All right. All right. She starts. Go ahead. That was the start. Find somebody. Get up, everybody. Just Sister Brown, I didn't say start and stop. Go find others. Find somebody who you haven't seen for a while and just greet them and tell them how they do. Yes. How they do, how they do, how they do. Yes, find somebody. Do I know the time? All right, your one minute is up. Continue after church. Your one minute is up. Brother Ro, give them a, a one minute up tune. Tell them to go back to their seat. Give them a tune. Tom, 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 tom. Get back to your seat. All right. So, so we're going to do that. Get back to your seat. Yes. That means you should be seated. That's the cue. Make sure you continue after church. Brother Jas, your minute is up. Yes. Sister Sharon, find your way to your seat. Sister Rob at the back, find your way to your seat. And Brother Bennett, and oh, after all, Sister Turner. So, so you see, it is so good to be the house of the Lord. Not true? Hey, yeah, like that. You want to say, you know, when we meet as brothers and sisters, Brother Boswell, there are some so powerful. You know, there's a sister who we travel sometimes to get on the bus. And you know, we do some 12-hour shifts. And so when we hug up on the bus, we pray, we have a blanket. And the two of us, Sister Blair, yes, is my bus traveling companion. And we cover some grounds in prayer, and then we go sleep and hug up on our blanket. Yes. Look here, wherever we go, my brothers and sisters, it's an opportunity for us to cover grounds for the Lord. Can we not schizophrenic? We are Christians all the time. Amen? Glory to God. And so today, we have some very special people amongst us. Yes, we have some first-time visitors. If you're coming to Nose Road for the first time, join me here. You know that tune? If you're coming to Nose Road for the first time, join me here. If you're coming to Nose, eh, eh, where are they? First-time visitors, please stand. If you're coming, so we have with us, let me tell you some that we have. Sister Lionel Laylor, where are you? We have Sister Gloria Tomlinson, where are you? They're our first time visitors. I can't find them. Where are they? Sister Laylor, come. Where's Sister Laylor? Where? Come. You know, little children and they say, come. Join me up here. We want our first time visitors are super special. So I'm um, Brother La Lionel Laylor, Sister Gloria Tomlinson. I'm sure I said this is a while ago. Brother, Le Brother Laylor, Sister Gloria Tomlinson, 
Oh, here you go. All right. Hello. Nose road style. Hello. Yes. Do we have anyone else for the first time whose name I might not have? You're here for the first time and I don't have your name? All right. So these are our first time visitors. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Look at me now. Look at me, sir. Come again. <laughs> have a wonderful day. You may be seated. Thank you. You're here after all. See you then. God bless you. Amen. Good to have you. Thank you. You may be seated. You may be seated, sir. All right. And we also have um, Sister Jennifer Dabbs and Vanessa Dabbs, mother and daughter returning. Eh, eh. You have to go stand up. Come. Stand up so they see you. After all, welcome. Good to have you. Mother and daughter, welcome back. We will call it the sweeties later for the church. After all, good to have you back with us. Thank you so much. You may be seated. So um, the rest of us, make sure you, as you see them after church, to give them an extra special welcome. So we also have today some very special people amongst us. And those are the persons who are celebrating their birthdays and their anniversary. And you know, church, it's a very special time for us. And so we have after church a special treat for them. They have champagne. The Don't Tell Pastor has alcohol. Does it? No, it doesn't. Just saying. Um, we have cake. Yes, we have a treat for all the persons who are born in the month of November or if you got married in the month of November. So we want those persons to stand. I know that it's Sister Ellis's birthday today. Sister Ellis, Sister Turner, her granddaughter. Okay, oh, oh, Brother Neville, oh, Brother Samuels, hey, Sister Sh oh, Marina Marina gone. Oh, she, she married. All right, so if your anniversary, come here, birthday, come here. Church, let's go. Happy birthday to all of you. Happy birthday. Hey, happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to all of you. Happy birthday. What a whole heap of people. Watch here. You never know any of Oh, she was. I'm not sure. Okay. So all these persons that's here, you meet us over there. So Jas and Sharon are having their 29th wedding anniversary in the month of November. Happy anniversary. Sister Ellis has her 92. This is her 92nd birthday. Today. All right. So remember, we have a birthday anniversary book at the front. Make sure your names are in there. So next year, this time, I know exactly who are calling up. Have yourselves a wonderful day. Remember, we meet in the Mavis Reed Hall after church for the big celebration. They are not invited. Members only. All right. Have a wonderful day. You may be seated. Okay. And so we go now to the notices for today. And... Uh, just to know that this afternoon in the sanctuary right here, we have Bethel Bible College of the Caribbean, Jamaica, invited to their graduation service for the class of 2022. And of course, we have the president's induction service. So make sure you're here this afternoon starting at 4 p.m. All right? And they will be streaming live. So we want to also, um, for persons who are overseas, our online visitors, how could I forget to big you up? Welcome, welcome, welcome. And it's good to have you online. So there's a meeting with the multimedia um, and live stream team. Um, Reverend Roberts would like to meet with you November 7, that's tomorrow, at 6 p.m. in the Mavis Reed Hall. So make note of that team. Family Life Ministry, that's the ministry um, who is in charge of the service today in terms of the team that plans the service today. I'm going to invite Sister Patrine and Brother Oswald to stand. They lead the, the family life ministry. Okay. All right. So Sister Pat, so that's the member, just so we know for persons who might not be aware, that um, they lead the team for our first Sunday, which is family life as we celebrate today. 
And so they want you to know that um, the medical ministry presents men's health and wellness. Men's health and wellness. Let me hear from our men. Yeah. Yeah. A healthy man makes a good priest in the home. Amen. So tonight at 6 p.m. on Zoom, we want to ensure that, ladies, as we join them, ensure that our men are on Zoom tonight. And the Zoom credentials are the same. So it's the same one that we have been using. And if you notice on the screen behind me, um, you will see the Zoom credentials. So make note of that at 6 p.m. this evening. Um, continuing Men's Health Awareness. Um, men, men's Health Awel Awareness Day is just for our men. And so the medical ministry, in collaboration with the men's ministry, will be hosting a dedicated all to all our men on Saturday, November 12th. So men, it's a date. Whatever you have to do, make sure it's on your calendar from 10 to 4. We invite all our men. And you know what, men? Invite our brethren along. Yes? It's a beautiful time for fellowship and for discipleship and for evangelism. So it's men's day. And ladies, if we come, we come to serve. But we'll think about it. And it's going to be right here on the grounds. The activities will include health check, blood pressure, blood pressure, um, blood sugar, blood, sh um, um, food for, food care for diabetics, non-diabetics, nutrition talk, and it goes on and on. And all men are invited to support. Going back to rally from Grey, um, Grey Ground Rally will be November 8th. That's Tuesday at 7 p.m. And you're asked to give your usual support. That's this Tuesday at 7 p.m. Children's Ministry um, presents Parents Month. And in the month of November, nationally, we, we celebrate parents. And so Parents Month this November is supported by, celebrated by the Children's Ministry. And so on November 13th, you're asked to join in the Osborne Fish, the, the Children's Church with your parents, which is going to be on November 13, the hall behind me upstairs, for those who don't know. So if you go upstairs, that one right up there, that's the Osborne Fisher Hall. So we invite um, you to join from 9.30, that's parents of the children who are involved in the children's ministry. Um, it's a special day for our parents. Uh, women's convention will be on November 30, and this is a date you don't, November 20, I'm sorry, November 20, and this is something you don't want to miss, so make note of that. Women's convention, um, funeral service for Sister Dolores Mitchell will be here on this Friday, November 11 at 10 a.m. And then we go on to the condolences, Sister Jennifer Bernard. Is Sister Jennifer here with us? No? Sister Jennifer normally sits somewhere right across here for persons who don't know her. Um, her number is in the program. My brothers and sisters, it's a tough time. This is her only child. 432-8438. Um, please, please, please just take a note and give her a text. Um, send her a text, give her a call. As Sister Charmaine Wilkes, Sister Charmaine has recently lost her brother, and this was sudden. You know how this can impact the heart. Um, we ask that we continue to pray for Sister Eva Higgins, who is um, in the hospital, as well as Sister Hodeth Brian Karam. Both support numbers are there on the screen. Very good. I'm going to ask that you just do a screenshot, take the numbers down, but it does matter, my brothers and sisters, that we reach out. When we can visit, we do so. Also, our um, brother and sister Tomlinson, um, brother, sister... Beverly and brother Jesse Tomlinson's son, Tevin Tomlinson, was in an accident along with his friend. The last time I spoke to Brother T, they had to go to KPH uh, based on the situation. Do pray for them. Um, we also want to just be in prayer for our church family. Baptism will be um, coming up soon. I'm going to ask that you persons who are thinking about being baptized, Sister Caroline, if you're not here, give your name to any of the ushers and you will be contacted, your name and number. And for prayer breakfast, we have uh, this coming up December 3. If you have not yet got your tickets, persons with tickets, just stand so that they can, persons can see you. If you have tickets for the prayer breakfast still, I know they are going very fast. Just go to any of these persons after church. And if it's, it's nice if you can buy one for someone. 
All right, prayer breakfast is always such a blessing. The cost is $3,000. Rally will be on December 4. That's Rally Sunday, rather, will be on December 4. And remember, on this day, we give a contribution of $2,000. So, you know, we plan for that as, as we get our, whatever we put aside for this month and coming up to December 4, we want to have our $2,000. And for our little ones, 12 and under, they contribute $500. Rally night will be December 6. So note, December 6 will be our rally night. Um, our walkathon, these are all in aid of stewardship. Walkathon will be coming up, and we have our gospel concert, Valentine's banquet, and of course, we'll get more information as the time draws closer. I want my brothers and sisters to wish you a wonderful, wonderful day. And as we look at the theme, what's the theme for today? What's the theme for today? What's the theme for today? Winning souls for Christ. I want to reach. Thank you so much, Sister Ingrid, as you shared in what I may regard as your inimitable style. And um, we thank you for serving in that way. Brothers and sisters, good morning. It, it is such a joy to be in the house of the Lord, and it is a joy to see you as well. Uh, even though I would have met with the Lord if I had come here all by myself, yet with you being here with me as we meet the Lord together, I'm happier that it is so. It is now time for the dedication of babies. Is Mr. Richards here? No, he is not. All right, I'm not quite sure what's happening there, but until then, just to inform you, brothers and sisters, there's a particular need on the Lakovia district of churches. And so the administrative bishop of the denomination has asked for Reverend Samuels to be there on Sundays for the month of November and December. So on those days, uh, the Sundays in particular, Reverend Samuels will not be with us, but he, he will be here in the week as per usual. And then he returns to us uh, in the month of January. Uh, please understand uh, at this time the circumstance and indeed you know as the administrative bishop when an instruction is given accordingly we follow bear that in mind please and pray for him so he and his family are off to the district of Lakovia uh, this morning I want to also ask you brothers and sisters to if your number is not on the WhatsApp group for the membership, I'm going to ask you to leave your name and your number with the ushers. One of the tables, just leave your name and, uh, and your telephone number with the ushers so that you can access the messages that go out from the church. And as of this week, I'm going to be sending messages to you as members uh, on a regular basis if not a weekly basis and i would like for you to read it please because whatever i send is going to be of import to you and to the church family god's blessings be with you we continue in our service today thank you bless the lord we we'll now have the praise team coming back to us as we ask two of our councilmen or women to collect the day's offering for us, tithes and offering. But before we do so, let us bow our heads in prayer. Our Father and our God, we are so grateful to you 
for giving us life that we can come together to worship you. Lord, we enjoy coming to your house to worship you. We say like David, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. Lord, we pray that you will bless us today. And as your children come to return to you, Lord God, a portion of what you have blessed us with. Lord, we thank you for the jobs. We thank you for the opportunity to earn. And we pray, Lord, as we give, that we will bless it. And let the blessings fall upon us according to your words. In Jesus' name, amen. Two council men will come and the praise team. Ooh, may the angels sing to me. May the joy bells ring, tell me who is the king of kings. Nobody but my Lord. Ooh, may the angels sing. Yes, he made the world, he made the sea and land. Fasten them together with his mighty hand. Under his control and under his command. Nobody but my Lord. He made the world, he made the sea and land. Who oh, fastened them together with his mighty hand? Under his control and under his command. Nobody but my Lord. Let oh. the angels sing. the joy bells ring. Tell me who is the king of kings. Nobody but my Lord. Yes, yes, he made the world, he made the sea and land. Fasten them together with his 
segment of our service. We're going to have our scripture which will be taken from St. Matthew 18 verse 21 to 35 and this is going to be read by Brother Joshua Roan and after that before the preacher comes we are going to have a song by Brother Donovan and Sister Hermina White. Brethren, I just want you to sit together and focus on why we are here. Let's get in line. Let get, let's get together in the upper room. Yeah, man, we want an upper room attitude. Yeah, man, sit down and understand we are here to worship. So let us lay aside the weight and the sin that does so easily beset us and worship the King of Kings and the Lord of all lords. God bless you. Morning, everyone. This message is taken from Matthew 18, verse 21 to 35. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you. Not seven times, but 77 times. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. As he began a settlement, 
a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wives and his children and all that he had to be sold repay the debt. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, I beg, and I will pay back everything. The servant masters took pity on him, cancelled the debt and let him go. But when the servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver coins. He grabbed him and began to choke him. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison until he could pay that debt. When the servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their masters everything and had that had happened. Then the master called the servants in. You wicked servant, he said. I canceled all the debt of yours because you begged me to. Shouldn't you have shown mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? In anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. Here in this portion of God's holy word, we're on it by saying, As brother and sister White comes to us, just want to make a little addition to um, the announcement. Sister Jennifer lost her son, but Sister Donna also lost her nephew. And we just want to offer our condolence. Sister Donna, stand, let us see you. Pretty in our red over there. She don't look like she grieving, but grief don't show on clothes. Grief come from heart. So let us pray for them and there are other members of the family. Let us pray continually. Brother and Sister White. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Good morning, everyone. We just want to greet you in the name of the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. He's our friend, He's our Savior. He loves us more than we ever know. And this morning, the Lord looks into all of our hearts and he sees where we are broken. He sees where we are gone astray. He sees every need we have. And he's calling us again to himself. And in order for us to be true lights, to be true servants of God as we take our place in the world to share his word, he wants us to know who we are, who he is in our hearts. Until we know who God really is, then we can't truly minister for him. Because we can't truly be examples of Jesus Christ if we don't know who he is. And um, we're going to share this song with you this morning. Um, we would love to tell you what we think of Jesus, but my husband is going to... Let us pray. Eternal Father... We want to thank you, dear Lord, that we can come in your presence to lift you up. We want to thank you, dear Lord, for so sparing our lives, dear Lord. And as we come this morning, dear Lord, we just pray, dear Lord, that the Holy Spirit might move through this entire place right now. I just pray that your Shekinah glory, dear Lord, might touch each and every heart. Just move from move from pew to pew, dear Lord, touching and strengthening your people. And as we commit this song to you, we just give you all the glory and all the praise that is due to your matchless name. Amen. I would love to tell you what I think of Jesus. Since I found in him a friend so strong and true. I would tell you how he changed my life completely. He did something that no other friend could do. No one ever cared for me 
like Jesus. There's no other friend so kind as he. No one else could take the sin and darkness from me. Jesus found me. All my heart was full of misery and woe. Jesus placed his strong and loving arms around me. And he led me in the way I ought to go. God and now the table has been prepared the food has been put on the table and we are ready to eat and I now invite our pastor Dr. Reverend Dr. Donald Roberts to come and give us the word open your heart for the word pray for him as he comes that the angels of God and the Holy Spirit will attend and we will be blessed. God bless you. Reverend Dr. Roberts. God, as Roberts shares on the theme of us at 18 Nose Road at the Man of New Testament Church of God as Reverend Dr. Donald A. Roberts shares on the theme of I want to be a join us at 18 Nose Road at the Man of New Testament Church of God as Reverend Dr. Donald A. Roberts shares on the theme of I want to be a soul winner for the next four weeks. Week one, we will learn the responsibility for soul winning. Week two, the life necessary for soul winning. 
Week three, the danger of not winning souls. Week four, the joy of soul winning. It promises to be a great series. We start November 6th at 9 15 a.m if you can't join us in person then log on to our youtube platform at the mind of the new testament church of god you cannot afford to miss this join us at eight we will join you uh, brothers and sisters once again i want to greet you all in the name of our lord and savior Jesus Christ and it is my privilege to be serving you as your pastor at this time I want to greet our intern student pastor our brother Ronil Parkins as he serves here at the Nose Road Church for this school year and I just acknowledge all of you brothers and sisters who are having uh, special occasions in your lives, such as uh, wedding anniversaries. I do remember Brother Jass and Sister Sharon. I remember that day. And I want to congratulate you and congratulate all those who are having uh, their birthdays this month and I want to ask your brothers and sisters to continue to keep our dear sister Jennifer Bernard in prayer when to visit with her last week it's as you would imagine a difficult period uh, for her so pray that God will strengthen her and indeed that God will offer protection to her. Our brother Tomlinson and his wife are facing another challenge as you are aware of because Sister Tomlinson had just buried her sister and just a week hence her son was in a critical accident. So do keep praying for them. A church this size every now and again something is going to happen. Uh, there's going to be a death, an accident, or something. And we want to stand beside each other. I want to uh, welcome uh, Reverend and Sister Walters. Uh, they just stayed away a little from us for a while the other day, and they we're back last week and they are in the house of God today and I want to especially welcome them um, and then uh, while Reverend Taylor is not here but Sister Taylor uh, Sister Pearl Taylor is she stayed they stayed away a while too and um, she is back with us today welcome Sister Taylor okay and just before I share God's word with you, uh, just to indicate, you may notice a choir did not sing last week, nor this week, but uh, some rearranging is being done, and you will eventually see that which I know will bless your heart. Uh, and so we trust the Lord that as the choirs will practice and begin ministering to you again, your heart will be blessed. Uh, you would also notice that you're not getting the program as well as the notices. Um, but we have had to make a decision in terms of just tightening up and just uh, spending funds a particular way. And so y if you look on the notice boards, you will see the notices there and then where the program of the service is concerned. Uh, we'll just follow accordingly as the moderator guides us. I'm going to invite you, brothers and sisters, if you would turn in your Bibles to the book of Matthew, chapter 28, from verse 16 to verse 20, and some companion passages which I want you to take note of and read when you go home is the 
chapter, chapter 10 of Matthew, chap, of Matthew. That's Matthew chapter 10, all of that chapter, but particularly from verse 5 to verse 42. And then Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Uh, those are the corollary or companion passages. And I'll be making reference to them from time to time. Luke chapter 10 as well is also another compass, companion passage. And you'd want to just go over those when you go home. But from Matthew chapter 28, 16 to 20, I'm going to read just now. That which is called the Great Commission. Then the eleven disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore, and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. That's the word of God for us. Let us bow heads in prayer, please. Our Heavenly Father, we come as your people now before you. We bless your name, Lord. We give you honor. And we acknowledge you as our creator, the creator of the ends of the earth, the creator of all that is. And we thank you, O oh God, that we are privileged to come into your house, to worship, to give unto you, to fellowship to commune with you and to hear your instruction for life. Lord, I pray that you will minister unto us today in ways that you want to. I pray that you will speak to the hearts of my brothers and my sisters, the young people, the boys and the girls, I pray, O oh God, that you will quicken us by your spirit and grant that the sense of your presence and the joy which we feel when your presence is upon us, grant that it will constrain us and push us, Lord, to really want to become like you, to want to do your will. Lord, oh God, I pray that you will take your word today and plant it upon the recesses of our hearts. I beg you in the name of Jesus for your hand to be upon me. Oh God, that I may declare your word to your people. And at the end of the day, I pray that your name alone will be glorified. And if there's a non-Christian inside this building, oh God, I pray that you will speak to such a heart that that person may turn his or her life over to you. God, we plead with you to answer these requests. Lord, it is for your glory and honor if you will only do these things that I've asked, O oh God, I'm sure your name is going to be glorified. So answer and have your own way, I pray. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you.
So brothers as, and sisters, as you have been told, the theme for this series is I want to reach souls for Jesus Christ. And the theme for today is responsibility for soul winning. Responsibility for soul winning. The statistics of the Jamaican church of Christianity as far as the Jamaican population is concerned, issued by the Statistical Institute of Jamaica, which comes out of the survey done, as recorded in the book written by Stephen Jennings, reading the signs of the time, a prophetic response, to Jamaica at 60, points out, and I quote, the percentage of those who identify with Christianity fell from 69% of the population to 65%. Those identifying with another or no religions increased to 35% from 31%. Fewer men and fewer young people under the age of 35 identify with the Christian religion in 2021 as compared to 2011 and 2001. Interestingly, 83% of the population considered themselves either deeply and or somewhat religious, though the number who are not much and or were not religious, 17%, increased in 2021 compared to previous census years. Christianity, in its organized official manner in Jamaica, is less influential than it used to be. Many people are spiritual and believe in God, but do not believe in formal religions and churches. If the trend, if the trends continue, Christianity will become more ineffective in Jamaica society. End of quote. All that is saying is that the church is getting less and less in its effectiveness upon the Jamaican population. Craig Springer, in his book, How to Revive Evangelism, points out that, and I quote, no matter how much our walk with Jesus has impacted our lives, many of us simply aren't talking about it, not to our families, not to our friends, and not within our communities, end of quote. Do we not see the problem even among us? Have you ever led someone to Jesus Christ as a Christian? Yes, you. You're a Christian. But have you ever led another person? Not inviting them to church now, but you have share the gospel with them, assist them in praying a prayer of repentance and faith, and then you prayed with them, they accepted Jesus and are born again and are no members of a church. Have you ever done that? 
Do you win, did you win someone to Jesus Christ in 2021? I mean, the pandemic was on, but we were still buying food. We were still working. We were still taking taxes. We were still using cell phones. What's up? Zoom, Instagram, and other form of social media. Have you shared the gospel of Christ with someone since 2022? Since January? Have you shared the gospel with someone? Do you have a desire, I mean a strong desire, to share the gospel with someone? I know what the answers are because I see it in churches across Jamaica. I see it as you watch Christians. I see it as when crusades are kept Believers end up at crusades, which is a crusade for non-Christians, and didn't even think of inviting a non-Christian to the crusade. I see it, brothers and sisters, when altar calls are made in churches, and Christians don't look to the left or the right, at the bench in front of them, or the bench behind them to see if there's a non-Christian and that they could invite to walk to the altar with them. But I know what it used to be in the 70s. When an altar call is made in church, you see members reaching across. Are you a Christian? Would you like for me to walk to the altar with you? Would you like to come with me to the altar that we can pray with you? I see it in the 60s. When the Clifton Church and the Waltham Park Church, when Waltham Park came up from down the road further, uh, just forgot the name of the street just now, and they would come up to that big building they called the factory. And members now would go throughout the area and just shaving the gospel with people. And that's why Waltham Park Church is one of the biggest churches in Jamaica today. And the Clifton Church is one of the strongest because in the 60s when members came out of St. Anne and other places to go to Kingston to look up opportunities, economic opportunities, on Sunday evenings, they would go throughout the community, Whitehall Avenue and other places and share the gospel of Christ. Today, that's not what we see. We don't see that passion for souls. But what we see today, brothers and sisters, is a blessing plan. We see a miracle with your name written on it. While souls are crying and men are dying and the lost are not being won to Christ. So today, brothers and sisters, I, I want us as a congregation that meets here at 80 Nose Road to be the church, the church that the Lord is trying to build, the church where people recognize that if you go around to 80 Nose Road, you may not leave there without being a Christian. Yes? If you go around there, the fire of the love of the members are going to reach you. And then people will know that that's the place to go. I want to share with you, therefore, a biblical understanding of the mission of the church. Why does the church exist? And th there are basically three reasons, but I'm going to raise up one for you. And what we want to do, brothers and sisters, is to notice 
in seeking to gain that understanding of why the church exists. I want us to look at the necessity of the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Because in Acts chapter 1 verse 8, Jesus said, But you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. According to Jesus, the express purpose for the baptism of the Holy Spirit is that the disciples would be empowered to give evidence of his presence in the world. When the believers move about in the world, people would come to see the work of Jesus Christ. Peter the apostle pointed out on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit came upon the 120 believers and people were questioning, what is happening here? You're speaking in languages that you don't know because you're all Galileans, but you're speaking in at least 13 different languages. Are you drunk? Because you know when men drink and they are drunk, they tend to speak a certain way. Yes, but they noted that it's not that they were speaking gibberish. They were speaking known languages. But the miracle at Pentecost is that they who were speaking were not taught that lang those languages. They never spoke those languages. But by the power of the Spirit upon them, they became not only bilingual or trilingual, but they were just speaking different languages. And the people who came were hearing them speaking the gospel in the, pe the language of the people. And they said, what is this? But Peter understood what was happening. And Peter, the apostle, pointed out that the coming of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost was fulfillment of the promise made by Jehovah to his people as seen in Joel chapter 2. And if you look at Joel chapter 2, brothers and sisters, when you go home, the context in which Joel spoke of the outpouring of the Spirit were three. One, Joel spoke of the coming destruction and terror and gloom from verse 1 to verse 11. God was going to bring destruction and gloom upon the people because of their sin and their rebellion. But the second part of the context is that Joel spoke of a call to genuine repentance from verse 12 to 17 to avoid the destruction. If the people repented, the destruction and gloom would be averted and avoided. But the third piece of the context is that restoration Hope, fearlessness, abundance, gla and gladness would come after repentance, according to verse 18 to verse 27. It is within this framework that the Spirit of Jehovah would be made available to all men, regardless of age, gender, and status, because the Spirit would come and young men and young women, maidens and children, old men and old women would dream dreams and, and they would see God's glory spread across and joy would come upon the people as they repented of their sins. Brothers and sisters, members of the body of Christ, therefore, God's church are baptized by the Spirit empowered by the Spirit to warn people of the coming judgment of Jehovah. We understand Jesus' love and, and God is love on the works, but except people repent of their sins, they are going to perish. They are going to go to hell. If they don't become Christians before they die, hell will not miss them no matter which direction they go.
and we are empowered to call people and say flee from the wrath to come Jesus is coming back not as a savior but as a frowning judge turn from your sins and walk in the way of God that's what the spirit of the Lord is upon you and within you to, to, to cause to do The Spirit of the Lord empowers us to call people to repentance so that they may escape God's judgment and wrath. The Spirit of the Lord comes upon us and dwells within us so that we can proclaim that people can be restored to Jehovah through his Son, Jesus Christ, and find abundant hope and joy and live without fear. What a life! A glorious life to be able to live with hope and joy and fearlessness in victory all the days of your Christian life. So the Christian is different from the non-Christian. The economy may be bad, but we know who is our provider. We know that. So we don't fret. Whether we are economists, whether we are accountants, or whether we are a higgler, or a store clerk, whether we are employed or unemployed, we know that because the Lord is our shepherd, all our needs shall be supplied. And we have joy. You look on us as Christians and think we don't have problems. If we should ever start telling you about our problems, you would cry for us. But we are not walking with our heads down. We are not walking as though we don't have a father. We are not walking as though we don't have any hope. We walk in victory. We know our God. And if you make the mistake of telling us as Christians that you are going to send Thomas for us, we are going on our knees. We don't live in fear. And this is what I'm saying, Christians. Make this thing real. You have God within you. God is on your side. Stop being afraid. And stand up and walk in victory. The promise and the possibility of the baptism of the Holy Spirit therefore means that each believer, yes, every single one of you, my members, and if there's a person here from a different church, you, every Christian, can and must live in the power of the Holy Spirit so that they can, we can be channels of deliverance to humanity. Get up, man. Straighten yourself. Stop living in depression. You are God's child. And stop focusing on material things so much. Seek first the kingdom and his righteousness and all things that you need will be added to you. For God's sake, every time you pray, it's about material things. Leave those alone for a while. And seek after God and more God and more of God and the power of the Spirit. Cry out to God to use you to win souls for Him. And stop embarrassing God. Stop treating God like a little boops, like a little weakling. Our God knows what he's doing. Focus on the things God wants us to focus on. If all believers are expected to be baptized with the Spirit, and the baptism is for witnessing to the reality of Jesus in the world, 
then all believers can and must be involved in a definite way in a lifestyle that results in the salvation of souls. This is not about getting people to church, but getting Christ to people. It is about bringing people to Jesus Christ. Because brothers and sisters, the statistic I showed you, I spoke of earlier on, it's going to mean that fewer and fewer non-Christians will ever come through those doors. It is you and I who have to go to them. Follow Jesus. Go by the seaside. Go to the marketplace. Go in the street. Visit homes. That's what he did. Because you know, brothers and sisters, something has just gone wrong, man. And sometimes I want to ask God to almost take this passion from me because I keep disturbing people wherever I go. Because if what I see in the word is true, then what I'm seeing in church must be wrong. The believers are using work on the property of the churches to validate their Christianity and think that that is what it's about. There are places where there are no structures like this. Believers are just living for the Lord. They may meet and, and just pray in, in a house or in the forest. No choir, no offering collecting, no musician, nothing like that. But they are on fire for the Lord. So be careful of using the structure of the church and the structure of a denomination and feel that if I'm involved, I am all right. You know, because I'm an officer, because I'm a Sunday school teacher, because I, I'm an usher, because of what? No, no, no. That is good, you know, brothers and sisters. Because, because what that does is that it helps to build as we come together. That's necessary. But don't make the mistake of feeling that because you are involved in these things, that that's where it's at and that's it. Because souls are out there. The, the real action is out there. We come to church to be built up and strengthened to fellowship. Church is a gas station for Christians. We go to the gas station to, to take in gas because we have been running. And we go back to church now to be touched by a brother, to touch a brother, to pray together, to hear God's word that we can go out again. So brothers and sisters, the necessity of the baptism of the Holy Spirit points to what the church is to be doing. But then Matthew has an understanding concerning the disciple and missions. And this also helps us to have a biblical understanding of the purpose of the church, what we should be about. Matthew wrote the gospel named after him to answer the question, who is a disciple of Jesus Christ? That's one of the reasons Matthew wrote the gospel. Currently, it is divided into 28 chapters. And what Matthew has done is that he has organized the gospel around five major blocks of Jesus' teaching. Matthew chapter 5, 6, and 7 is the first block. And it points out that the Christian is a person who has the character of the kingdom. Which suggests that if you don't have the character of the kingdom, you're not a Christian. 
Because if you are a Christian, you will have the character of the kingdom. The second major block of Jesus' is teaching is chapter 10, which speaks to the vocation of the disciple of Christ. That is, the disciple is conscious that God has called him to partner with him in winning the world to himself. And the disciple now answers that call from God to live his or her life in bringing the gospel to the world, that the world may come into the kingdom. And so that block speaks to the vocation of the disciple. But the third block, major block of Jesus' is teaching is chapter 13. That deals with the disciples' understanding of the scripture. The fourth block is chapter 18, which deals with the interpersonal relationship of the disciple of Christ. For chapter 13, it means that the disciple is one who loves the scriptures, who seeks to have a, a vital understanding of the scriptures. It means, therefore, that the disciple, who, the person who doesn't have a passion to know God's word, must question whether he's really a Christian. Because Matthew is answering who is a Christian. And the Christian is a person who has a passion to understand God's word. And in chapter 18 now, which deals with the interpersonal relationship of the disciple of Christ, it means that the disciple of Christ is one who ensures that he is in good relationship with people. You will not, the disciple will not know that somebody has something against him and doesn't go and seek to make that up. He builds relationship because the disciple understands that you will not be effective in winning souls to Christ except you have good relationship with people. And the final block of Jesus' teaching is Matthew 24 and 25. That deals with the anticipation of the coming of Jesus Christ. It's the anticipation of the disciple. So the disciple of Christ is one who is looking for the coming of Jesus Christ. Always living in such a way, one eye on the sky, one ear listening out for the trumpet. He's at school, but he's looking out for the rapture. He's at school, but he's listening for the trumpet. He's at work, but he's listening for the trumpet. He's in church with everybody else, but him listening out for the trumpet. Because he cannot afford for the Lord to come. And he's not ready. So then, when we have this understanding of Matthew's gospel, as far as disciples and missions are concerned, we see that from this organization of the gospel, we get the understanding that the disciple of Christ is one who is actively involved in bringing the gospel of Christ to people who need salvation. Yes. He has a sense of responsibility for the salvation of the world. He feels for people like his master in chapter 9 of Matthew, chapter, of Matthew, which leads into chapter 10. The Bible said he had, when Jesus saw the people, he had compassion on them because he, see, he saw them as people without shepherd. Brothers and sisters, Matthew's understanding, and this one is a tough one that I'm going to say, Matthew's understanding is that the disciple of Christ is not growing if he's not involved in winning those who are lost in sin to his master. You're not growing. You're not developing. You're not maturing. You're involved in the church. You may know the church, you know the culture, you know the language. If, if, if you're asked to pray, you know, you know what to pray. You, you, know, you know the language to use, the lingua. You, you know that there are certain things about church people, whichever denomination. 
And, and, in, and in many denominations, for instance, if you're asked to pray and you mention demons. By you say demons, somebody over there says, I'd say, aha, mm -hmm. praise the Lord. You know how to do it, brothers and sisters. I am in the New Testament church of God for 49 years. I know the church. But if you're not actively involved in winning the lost, you're not growing. There is, brothers and sisters, there is no negotiation in the matter. If you're a disciple of Christ, you must win the lost for Christ. You must bring the gospel of Christ to a world that is lost and dying. If you don't carry the gospel of Christ to a world that's lost and dying, it may be an indication that you are not saved. This is not about Pastor Roberts, about New Testament Church of God about Pentecostalism, about Jamaica. This is about what God's word says. Wake up, brothers and sisters. Wake up and smell the coffee. God is coming back. We must do God's work. We must do God's will. You must choose a position. But the third thing I like to raise up, as far as an under a biblical understanding of the mission of the church, why we are here, has to do with the Great Commission. The Great Commission. They all are intertwined. Because in Matthew 28, verse 18 to 20, we see Jesus and he comes to the mountain where he had appointed the disciples to meet with him. And when he comes, his first statement was, all power is given unto me in heaven and on earth. No, before that, before the resurrection, what you saw was a humble human Jesus. They boxed him. They spat in his face. They put a crown of maca upon his head and, and, and jeered him. But no, after his resurrection, He's the risen Christ. Before, he was a suffering Jesus. No, he's a risen Lord. Before, he was limited. There are certain things he would not do. But no, he's the glorious risen Lord, full of all authority. And so he comes to them and he said, All power. Is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go. Go. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to live the way I have taught you, and I'm with you all the way to the end of the earth. Brothers and sisters, Christ clarified his deity and his sovereignty in the minds of his disciples. The resurrection had set to the question as to his identity and authority. He's now declared to be the son of God and God himself. John on the Isle of Patmos saw him and understood that he has control over death, over time, and over existence. 
listen to John. Hear the record of John. John said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. And I heard behind me a loud voice as of a trumpet saying, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last. And what you see, write in a book and send it to the, 11, the seven churches which are in Asia. Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and Laodicea. Then I turned to see the voice behind me that spoke with me. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands. But that's not the issue. In the midst of the seven lampstand, one like the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down to the feet, girded about the chest with a golden band, his head and hair were like white like wool, as white as snow, and his eyes like flame of fire. His feet were like fine brass, as if refined in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. He had in his right hand seven stars. Out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword. His countenance was like the sun, shining in its strength in, that's in the midday. And when I saw him, I fell down at his feet as though I was dead. But he placed his hand on me, saying, don't be afraid. I know my presence make you afraid. But don't be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I'm alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys of the grave and of death. Brothers and sisters, this risen Lord, this one that John, when John saw him, John fell down as though he were dead. Yes? Lifeless because of the form of Jesus. It is the same Jesus. The same Jesus who came, whose face was in dazzling brilliance. Effulgence, full of light and, and, and might. This Jesus is the same one who speaks to us. This is not Donald Roberts. This is no bishop. This is no doctor. It is Jesus, the risen Lord. Won't you see him today? Won't you hear him today? W won't you sense his presence? Won't you fall down at his knees today? W won't, won't, you see, won't you recognize that his face is, is of such brilliance that when, when you take one look, you have to take off your eyes because you cannot, you cannot bear to look upon his glory? Won't, won't you see that out of his mouth comes a two-edged sword? That is, his word is sharp. Won't you therefore fall before him and acknowledge that you are his servant, that you are his slave, that you have no choice but to obey him? Brothers and sisters, in obedience to the Lord, those who are called by his name must make disciple-making or soul-winning their life's work and focus their activities on that so that it doesn't matter what you are doing, ultimately you are seeking to win the lost for Christ. You know, yesterday I was at my daughter's graduation at UWE. And there are some persons who graduated with first degrees, with, with postgraduate degrees, and with higher degrees. So, you know, they were doctors, lawyers, and, and other types of people. And, you know, I, I know how it goes because the persons now who would have gotten the first degrees, you, I mean, you, you, you see the justified pride. It's okay. 
those with the masters, you, you, you see the sense of achievement. And those with the doctorates have a more staid look. Yes? Uh, and you know that, you, you see, after, after yesterday, you have to call them doctor, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm a doctor. And rightfully so, I'm a doctor. <clears throat> and, you know, we, we tend to define ourselves by our profession. And, and when you're filling out documents and so on, you know, there's a section, if you're not working yet, you write student. Yes, and, you, you know, there's a section where it, there's Mr., Mrs., Miss., Miss and so on, you know. And if you're married, you know, you tick Mrs. MRS, you know, and so on. Uh, and, and it brings a certain, you know, yes, and, and so on to it. And when people see that they treat you a certain way, you know, and, and you put your profession, you know, whether you're a minister of religion or whether you're a carpenter or whether you're a teacher or lawyer, what have you. And, and we define ourselves by our profession. But tell you what happened. You will have to retire if you live long. So your profession won't mean too much. If you're a carpenter, after a while you cannot go up on the roof, you know. You can't go on the heights. You better stay down there and look up there. Yes? And, and those who are married, you know, your husband can leave, you know. Your wife can leave you. Yes. You know, and, and, and they can die. And, and you know, um, your, your children, <coughs> you know, they can die as well. And they can meet in an accident and they are confined to a wheelchair for the rest of their life. Can't help themselves. So your, your doctor boy that you used to boast on. Yes. Where you feel that you are the best thing since sliced bread in the community. Because your boy a doctor. Yes? He can meet in an accident and is confined to a wheelchair or on his back for the rest of his life. So watch defining yourself by your achievement. <laughs> Having said that, let's put it in this context now. If Jesus, the risen Lord, is saying, go and make disciples, go and win souls, you have got to redefine yourself. <coughs> You're not a carpenter, but rather a disciple-making Christian who happens to be a carpenter. You can't put carpentry, your profession, before what you are called to be, before what God has sent you to earth to do. You're not a student but rather a soul-winning student, a soul-winning Christian who happens to be a student. So when I was at Veer Technical High School, every day I'm witnessing to, so, to, to my fellow students. Twice per day I'm preaching. Some of them have gotten saved and have become pastors, pastoring overseas as well as here in Jamaica. I was a student, yes? I'm sharing the gospel everywhere I go. All over. Just talking about Jesus. Can't stop. I was a soul winning Christian who happens to be a student. But does not mean I am, have lost for it? Does it mean that because I was focused on soul winning, I have not reached anywhere in life, materially speaking? Do, does, does it mean that I, don't have, I, can't, I won't have a car? Does it mean that I can't have a master's and a doctorate? No. If you do what God says you should do, it will not stop you from achieving what you need to achieve. You're not a husband or a wife, but a disciple-making Christian who happens to be a husband or a wife. You're not a parent, but a disciple, a soul winning parent or Christian who happens to be a parent. Put soul winning first. And then those things after. Because in heaven, that won't be the thing that matters. 
It won't be whether you were a student, a husband, a wife, a carpenter, a mason, or an electrician. It is what you have done for Christ that will last. It is of that you will hear, well done, good and faithful servant. Your primary purpose in life is to be involved in the mission to which the Almighty Lord has called this church. And so, brothers and sisters, this understanding has caused the early church to grow the way it did. Because Philip was a deacon. The word deacon comes from a Greek word which doesn't have any status to it. That's not the focus. The word deacon comes from a Greek word which means servant. You serve the tables. Yes? But here is this deacon, Philip. And the Lord would speak to Philip and use him. He's serving tables. He's dealing with hospitality and benevolence. But every now and again, the Spirit of the Lord would come upon Philip. And Philip would go and speak to somebody about the Lord Jesus. In Acts chapter 8, when uh, Paul, Saul then, would persecute the church. And the church was scattered abroad. The Bible said in Acts 8 verse 1 to 4 that the believers, wherever they went, they would take the word of God. They ran away from Jerusalem and Judea. They were in places like Antioch and Syria and those places. And as they went, as they went to the marketplace, as they went to buy fish at the seaside, as they went elsewhere, they are sharing the word of God. And as a result, as the disciples were scattered abroad, everywhere they went, churches began to spring up. People began to give their lives to Christ and they gathered them into groups and they worshiped together. They were taught the word of God together and they grew in the Lord and kept multiplying and multiplying. Brothers and sisters, the challenge today is for you and I to recommit ourselves to God. That God can use us to reach the lost for him. So I won't close, I won't finish everything today. But I ask you, brothers and sisters, we have to do it God's way. We have to. You can't be a member of the church and you're not winning souls for Christ. You can't, it can't work that way. You can't. You're a young person. God can use you mightily, male or female. You work on the construction site or wherever you work. You work in a store or wherever. Recognize that God has set you up there to use you. That your boss, your co-worker can come to know him. God may have been speaking to your co-worker's heart, preparing her, giving her dreams which you don't know about, causing her to feel uncomfortable. And therefore, God now just bring you right in that place to work there, that you develop relationship with her, that you can share the gospel of Christ. And as you share, her heart is opened up and you surrender. She surrenders to Christ. Those of us who are elderly, Young people, listen to old people, you know. Don't think they don't respect you. They know you were here long before them. And therefore, as an elderly person in the community, you see the young people living ways that will destroy them in the future. Walk out no man. Come out of the house. Go sun yourself. Sun yourself by walking go to the corner shop. Or walking where you see those young men and young women. And just say, my son, just like Proverbs, my son, my son, I have been praying for you. I know your grandmother. I know your mother and your father. I've been praying that you would give your life to Christ. Come, let me pray with you. Right there on the road, right there at the road, rest your hand upon the young man. Because, see, because you are 75 or 70 or whatever, he's not going to take your hand off. He's going to want the prayer. You, you don't know that they ask you to pray for them when you're coming to church. 
Rest your hand upon the boy. Pray the living daylights out of him. Pray and let the tears run down. When you say I cry up there, no brothers and sisters, and this is no pretense. It's because of the heart that God has given to me. And so you weep over the erring one. Lift up the fallen. Tell them of Jesus, the mighty to save. My unsafe friends, if you're here, God wants to use your life. Don't waste your life, man. God wants to use your life to help others to come to know him. Because I was coming right in the line of my brothers, you know, my bigger brothers, and the last boy. And I was ready to bust out. But God snatched me as a brand from the burning. And as a result, my mother got saved. My sister got saved. All her four girls got saved. And there, 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 were, there were other people, different parts of Jamaica and the world, be it England, Canada, America, all over the Caribbean, wherever. I didn't know that this boy was going to do all those things. All I wanted to do was to win a soul for Jesus. And today I can, if I die right now, it is no problem. Because I know I would have done God's work. And when I leave this place, I know that there are others who, whom I've led to Christ who are going to carry on God's work. My unsafe friend, young men who are here, young women who are here, men or women who are here, come and give your life to Jesus Christ that he can use you for his glory and his honor. Why must you die in your sin when Jesus died for you that you may be forgiven for your sins? Believers, 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 man. Believers, believers, believers. You're, you're, you're nice people, you know. And you know I love you. But we have got to go another step. We have got to go, man. We have got to reach the lost. We have got to reach the lost. Since I came here, here's, here's, he was the one who came to the altar? Yes. Since I came here, this boy is the only one who reached this altar. You don't know me crying anymore. Crying at nights asking God to have mercy. Because I can't, but I can't serve at a church where souls are not being saved. I have told God to kill me. Our, our saved souls. I, I, I refuse to live if souls don't come to know the Lord Jesus Christ. No. Come, believers, man. Come. Come. This is God's will that we win souls for him. So let's keep doing what we are doing in church. It's important. But let us reach out to the last for Christ. Is there somebody here today, another Christian? Let me go back down this side. Walk with me up to the altar if you're not saved. And come and give your life to Christ. I'm going to go, I'm going to walk back up. Is there somebody down here not saved? Just come with me. Just, just step out of your seat and come with me. Come and surrender your life to Jesus. Not because I don't know you. Don't stay there in your sin. Come. Come and give your life to Christ. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? I am thine, O Lord. I have heard thy voice and it told thy love to
Consecrate me now to thy service, Lord. Consecrate me. Is there someone to come to Jesus? Will you come now? Let my soul look up. Let my soul look up with a steadfast hope, and my will be lost in So draw me nearer, nearer, forward in your seat. This is between you and God now. You're not going to pray for somebody else now. It's your personal consecration. Commit yourself to God. Pray unto him and sanctify yourself before the Lord. Give him your all. I'll just ask him to use you to win souls for him. Let's pray at this time. All of us in this place, those who are not Christians, pray and ask God to save you. The rest of us who are Christians ask God to consecrate you and to use you to win souls for him. Let us all pray. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord God, call upon him, brothers and sisters. Call upon him. Talk to him. to you to win souls for you to reach the lost for you and Lord God I pray that you will minister to my brothers and my sisters my members Christians from elsewhere who are here today I pray Lord that you will Speak to us. Speak to us, O oh God. Consecrate us. That we may clearly see what our mission is. That, O oh God, we may reach the lost for you. Because indeed, souls are crying and men are dying. Help us to reach them at any cost. Consecrate my young people, O oh God. The children. Touch them, O oh God. Breathe upon them. That like Jesus as a 12-year-old child, O oh God, or like Samuel, they may hear your voice. Or like Joseph as a teenager, he will stand for you. Lord, oh God, remember the adults, remember your people, oh God. Oh God, may you touch us all. May the fire of your spirit fall upon us and rest upon us. May your spirit come 
in new ways, O oh God. And rest upon us and use us, O oh God, to your glory. Remember those among us who are not Christians, who did not come forward to your altar, O oh God. I pray for your mercy upon them. Help them to trust you for salvation, to repent of their sins, and to turn their lives over to you. Have your own way, Father. We wait upon you as we consecrate ourselves for your purpose in your son's name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Draw me sisters, the parents with that child finally arrived while I was uh, just about speaking and I'm sure you would not want Jesus to say suffer the little children to come unto me instead of turning them back so I'm going to ask for your patience, we have a few minutes before closing time and I'm going to invite the members of the church and pastors council to come just now and the parents with that baby would you come, please? Jesus loves me. This I know. sisters, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we want to welcome Mr. Brandon Richards and Kashika Francis, who have brought their baby, Liam Richards, to the house of God today. As per usual, in cases like these, I want to just acknowledge Mr. Brandon Richards and indeed congratulate him that he did not allow the mother of his child to come to the house of the Lord alone to dedicate um, his child. But he has come along and since he came up here, he has taken the baby from Kashika, holding the baby. Right. And I... We all want to uh, encourage you, um, Brandon, to keep fulfilling your responsibility in this regard. So then, they're here to present their child, their son indeed, before the Lord, as Jesus himself was presented in the temple by his parents. And in so doing, they are recognizing that their child is not their personal property primarily, 
but belongs also to God. And that as parents, they have responsibilities before God. And in their promises, which we are going to ask them to make today, they will commit themselves to fulfill these responsibilities. As a church, we shall welcome their child into our family as Jesus welcomed children that were brought to him. Also, we shall promise in the presence of God to offer our support and friendship to this child and his family. We indeed as a church will join the parents in sharing our faith in Jesus in the hope that this child, this boy, may one day discover a faith in Christ for himself. And then we will also ask God's blessings on them. We want to recall the words of scripture where Moses called Israel, Hear Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord our one God. And you must love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. These commandments which I give you this day are to be remembered and taken to heart. Repeat them to your children and speak of them both indoors and out of doors when you lie down and when you get up. And Jesus said, truly I tell you, unless you turn around and become like children, you'll never enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever humbles himself and becomes like this child will be greatest in the kingdom of of heaven. Probably just two things, Brandon and Kashika, that I'd like to bring before you. One of them is that the child you're holding in your hand, the child you're brought into this world, has been lifted up by God as a standard for us as adults if we are going to enter God's kingdom. That child represents what God's kingdom is to be like in terms of humility and trust in terms of just openness to learning. And so we are to become like children if we are going to enter God's kingdom. But the second thing I want to bring before you is your responsibility. Because what happens is that you're expected by God to teach your child. Now it's kind of difficult for you to teach a person what you don't really know. And so what we're going to charge you with, Brandon and Kashika, is really just to follow the way of the Lord. Um, seek his way. Um, read his word. Don't open the Bible at your child's head. That's bibliolatry. A kind of a obia. You see, that, that's not necessarily. It is what is inside the Bible that's important. Read God's word. We don't use the Bible to do things like, like, like that. Um, but read God's word for your own benefit and let your child grow up hearing you read God's word until he begins to read God's word himself. I want to ask you to make some promises which are really for the benefit of your child. So please listen and respond accordingly. Do you, Brandon, uh, Fra Richards and Kashika Francis, thank God for his gift of your child and do you accept the joys and duties of parenthood Promising to give love and care to your child? Do you so promise? Okay. Do you promise to bring your child, listen to this one now, do you promise to bring your child to the church community? It doesn't have to be this one because I know you're living where you're living. Uh, but do you promise to bring your child to God's house where the church will assist you in sharing their faith and will assist you in helping your child to grow up in the faith of the Lord. Do you so promise? Which means going to church, you know. All right, okay. And then the last one. Do you promise to offer to your child uh, your love and your care and indeed to, to take care of your child with all that is in you so that your child can grow up to be the best he can be? And as a church... Do you promise to offer uh, to Liam Richards and his parents your love and your care and to join with his parents in sharing our faith in the Lord? Do you so promise? Okay. 
I'm going to invite Brother Bennett at this time to come and to offer prayer for Liam Richards and his family. We praise the Lord. Father, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor. And Father, as we are gathered here today, we put Brandon, Kashika, and baby Liam before you. Father, we are dedicating them now. We are bringing them before you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we are praying that you replace your hands upon this family. And we are declaring in the name of Jesus that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Father, as we have witnessed and listened to a powerful word today, reminding us of our responsibility, I pray that in the same way, God, you will remind Brandon and, and Kashyyyk of their responsibility to bring and to grow baby Leon in the love and admonition of your word. We are declaring in the name of Jesus that this young boy shall grow to love you, shall grow, God, to declare your words. We are declaring, oh God, that your light will so shine upon him that others, O oh God, will see this light and glorify you, our Father, who art in heaven. Father, we are declaring even right now a blessing upon this family. Oh, Jesus. Hallelujah. We are declaring, mighty God, that they are blessed. We are declaring, O oh God, that when they leave here this afternoon, hallelujah, that they shall be different. We are declaring, O oh God, that their home is blessed. Hallelujah. We are declaring in the name of Jesus that whatever their calling is, whatever their profession is, that they are blessed in the name of Jesus. So mighty God, we put them before you. We place this family in your hands. Hallelujah. And we declare, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, that they are your children. Mighty God, place your hand upon them, both now and even forevermore, as we tell you thanks. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Sir, I'm going to ask you to name your child child's name Liam Richards so Liam Richards I bless you and dedicate you to God and to the service of his kingdom in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit Amen Just before you go, Brandon and Kashiko, um, the next step, I, just to let you know, my office is across there. I, I am your... Okay, thank you. Um, I'm your bigger brother. Is it Brandon? I'm, I'm, I'm coming on to you that way. Whenever you want to talk, you can come right there and you can see me. God's blessings be upon both of you. Do have a good day. Thank you so much. God bless you. Shall we stand together, brothers and sisters? Thank you for your patience and understanding. Uh, just bow your heads with me just for the last time please. Lord, we bless your name and honor you once again and thank you for your grace and your goodness. 
Thank you for blessing your people. Thank you for this car that has been bought quiet, oh God. I pray for your blessings. May you grant protection. Keep it from thieves and robbers. Oh God, keep, keep it from accident and from danger. And Lord, may you provide the necessary resources that, oh God, it can be kept up and loans there may be will be paid, oh God. May you bless your child and bless this key, bless the car, because we ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. And so, bow your heads. You have come to the house of the Lord to be blessed, to fellowship, to be instructed, to be guided. Know that you have been blessed. Know that you have been instructed. Know that you have fellowshiped and guided. Go, and as you go, serve. Win souls for the Lord and help people to come to know him as Lord and Savior. And indeed, as you go, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of his countenance upon you and give you his peace henceforth and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Do shake somebody's hand. Next week I will do that. I'll come to the front door. Do have a good day, brothers and sisters. Thank you so very much. Amen.